Nitro's to glory, but E Buggy pays the bill. This, oh, I gonna, I'm glad I make some mistake. He keeps the low board. Let me see. Is he gonna stop by? He's gonna go up over the hip throw. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Jan from uh, Elseram. Uh, you are um, sort of a newcomer to the electronics market. Uh, I assume you come from electronics engineering, and uh, product, yes. Yeah, and um, and you have come up with a uh, first a ten scale version of the Speedo, and this year with an eight scale version. Um, yeah, t tell a little bit about yourself, and then tell us about this uh, really great looking Speedo. Yes. Hi. So basically, I'm super happy to be here on this perfect event and uh, maybe I should start with some information regarding technology we used for our ESC. So basically we have the production of ceramic and uh, electronic parts in our company and we can produce a lot of components for industry and power electronics and so on. And we had some idea with uh, Max Kessel let's say at the beginning, let's, let's make uh, something special, something new for RC market because I like really much RC market and uh, we used all of technologies we have on the roof and uh, made this thing. So basically uh, this is the aluminum oxide cooler. That's the reason why the name of uh, ESC is oxide and uh, the MOSFET transistors are attached completely without any resistance layer on the ceramic and it means we have super thermal conductivity um, heat transfer out of ESC and thanks this step this point we have enough place for display so the uh, the main point is we attach MOSFET transistors directly on the ceramic no resistance uh, thermal resistance, uh, like uh, other solutions. Yeah, I think that's something that I find uh, absolutely coolest about this, that this is basically purely an engineering project. It, it's not so much that you are an uh, ex-driver or someone who is like, hey, I want to have my own company. You have the technology, you have an idea, and you make it true. Um, so obviously the cooling component is the sort of biggest technological leap that we don't see many in, in other manufacturers with aluminum oxide and um, the thermal conductivity of that. Uh, but then the big part that catches most people's eyes is the screen. Uh, so instead of having this programmable board, you have the screen on the on the on the ESC itself, and you can tune the the settings from there. Um, what was the idea with the screen, and uh, uh, what do you, what can you do with it? To, so there's something something new that uh, you can bring in with the screen on the ESC. Yes, it's completely uh, different approach now with the screen and three buttons. So uh, it's super easy to use. So if you want to change something, for example, uh, drive frequency for throttle brake, uh, boost uh, timing, turbo timing and so on, it takes a few seconds. So it's the, the feedback, if you want to test something on the track, the feedback is immediately. So if I have, for example, something new, new new parameters, new, new functions, we can immediately uh, get feedback from our drivers. And uh, what is maybe most important uh, and the thing we, we realize later, the feedback from drivers. For example, if Michael Orlovsky racing in European Championships in Utrecht, I have immediately feedback how is going on with the battery, with the power, with the temperatures and so on. And it, it takes a few seconds for some pictures. He sent me pictures and I can look at it and uh, uh, make support of him. So it's it's super easy for me uh, to to get feedback from drivers and uh, regarding this feedback make some improvements for future new development. Yeah, um, that's that's a, this is a super cool ESC. I think there's a lot of different electronics brands, but I think you really step out. Um, uh, on top of this, uh, obviously. You started with the 10 scale ESC, and now you're moving the 8 scale. Um, so, was there some challenges moving from 10 scale to 8 scale that sort of on the engineering side that you have to face, uh, or was it just uh, matching the amperage draw and, and all that to the 8 scale level of power? 
So every time if you want to design and produce uh, some, some equipment, something with high power density, you are struggling with a lot of things. High power density, the small pace, high power is every time the problem. So, for example, 10 scale uh, ESC was uh, quite easy for us. Design, produce and the reliability is super nice. And uh, the reason is uh, the, the voltage is only for 2S. And uh, uh, ESC for 8K buggies is a completely different world because it's much more power. Uh, the voltage is two times more, so 4S. And if you have more voltage, you are struggling with uh, voltage spikes during uh, motor control. For example, if you, if you uh, are braking during hard landing and uh, you have uh, loose contacts on batteries, uh, coming the, the problems because the motor uh, uh, there is a energy in the motor accumulated and this energy you can put in uh, back to the battery uh, during recuperation but if you lose the contact with your battery the energy can destroy your ESC so uh, this is the reason why for example this 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 problem with wiring is the reason why for us is the 8 k ESC much more challenging than 10 scale but thanks to feedback from uh, customers and drivers we are uh, pushing it and uh, uh, making improvements for uh, higher reliability uh, and, and so on. So this event you have a few top drivers now obviously Mihail Orlovsky I think is your best uh, sort of top level driver Max uh, Götzl uh, and I think uh, Martin Baird well, who are your drivers and what's the plan for the future um, do you have a plans to come out with a motor as well do you have plans to broaden your range to other levels of technology or then just have a stronger and stronger race team and start uh, getting more recognition in, within the industry Basically, we started with X-Ray because uh, maybe you know the, the Max Getzel and Martin Barr, uh, they are uh, friends. And uh, then we had to make some step forward to show the world. We are not only for X-Ray platform, but for uh, Schumacher, for example, as well. And the next step should be uh, in this direction. So for me, uh, the, the other brands, uh, especially in the United States, uh, we should get driver from the United States, from maybe associated, uh, techno and so on. And uh, to show the people it's uh, possible to, to use this in uh, all categories or brands we have now. So that's the uh, our plan with drivers and uh, regarding motors it's quite difficult to uh, answer uh, but to be honest it's super competitive uh, uh, environment can I say so uh, there are brands uh, uh, with uh, experience uh, advantage uh, like uh, magnets uh, copper uh, uh, and and so on. So it's not uh, easy for Czech Republic to buy all these components from China, for example, and uh, assembly together with some reasonable cost, for example. So it's uh, one maybe the most important point. Uh, and uh, as I told you, we have all technologies we need for this ESC and uh, these uh, uh, lines running every day and if I put their uh, five hour production time ESC I don't recognize it but if I want to buy new facility new machines for uh, motor production uh, I guess it will be difficult, but not decided yet. It's only my uh, my opinion now, and uh, uh, let's let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's a good good answer because I think it shows that your sort of core 
like what you want to do is keep everything in house uh, be able to make uh, things uh, here uh, within the EU and uh, specifically in Czech Republic for you uh, instead of uh, having to outsource from uh, elsewhere uh, and I think that's sort of what you've done with the ESC so uh, I think it makes a lot more a lot of sense to do that here yes it's uh I totally understand if you if if, if you want to uh, be fast, uh, you need production on the roof for improvements as well. So if if something uh, is wrong, something happened here, I can immediately react with my people in development. They they are connected with me. But if you uh, have OEM product, okay, it's it's possible, but. Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't like this approach. So uh, I would like to have everything uh, on the roof, under control, and maybe it's better uh, make uh, the best ESC, and uh, that could be enough. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jan. Uh, it's a pleasure to see this product. It's a pleasure to get to meet you uh, here in person, and, and thank you for the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, we're here with uh, Max Gotzel now. Uh, we just spoke with Jan. Uh, you're obviously been a big part of this because you've been involved since the beginning. Uh, and uh, to begin everything off, you're a racer yourself, but since the last few years, you've been moving more towards the managerial role and uh, with X-Ray, of course, but also now with uh, LSRAM. So what's your role with LSRAM and how did this whole project come to be? Yeah, so... I'm a driver myself, like you mentioned, so I still go to the races and do all the racing myself I need to do. But in the last two, three years, let's say how we mentioned, I focus more on supporting the team, both Elstram and X-Ray. Also now doing more into like Savok stuff with servos and so on. So how I got into this project was kind of random, let's say. So I have a track in the Czech Republic with my father, eight scale dirt. And uh, Jan just appeared, you know, and he comes from the same city like I do. So we have the same origins, basically. And uh, yeah, he just showed up, started to come to the races and we became friends, let's say. Like, we, we knew each other from the RC. Then we found out we come from the same village and so on. And then COVID struck. So we got closed up in the hall. There was the idea with him and my father to build a track indoors because I was at that time quite young and the potential of me doing well at races was still high. Let's say it's getting a little lower year by year. But uh, yeah, we decided to build a track indoors. So uh, where the Elstrom factory is, we built a track, carpet track indoors and we just started driving like every week, couple days a week. And the idea was born that we make something new. Yeah, and um, obviously he got the technology side down. You're much more uh, in deep in the RC world. You've been racing for a long, long time, as long as I can remember, basically. And, and um, what was your like sort of first reaction when, when he presented you with this idea of uh, doing an ESC? Did you have ideas from the get-go or was it sort of like he knew what he was doing and you told him like, this is how we're going to do it or how did it all come to be? Yeah, like I mentioned, I was quite young back then. So if it was now, it would be for sure a little different approach from my side. But at that time, I didn't really know, you know, how to create some new things or even have ideas to make new but uh, they came with the idea and I put some input from my side from the racing also on the setting and everything and then obviously the testing of the product itself so yeah and um, the big thing this year is eight scale eight scale first ever uh, electric if more worlds so I, I, I guess you've been doing a lot of testing for that um, from, from if I remember correctly, you was running Hobbywing before, as as did many other people. So, what was your sort of uh, feeling with Elstram? Uh, I know a lot of, especially ten scale guys. They they like the sort of software side of things. They want the smooth feel and all that. Um, so, was that something you kind of had to work for in the beginning, or did you have it covered from the get go? Uh, you mean the feeling, the like the power feeling? Well, the. It's actually quite interesting and unique that basically since the beginning the power was good, 
you know, like there was no issues with too much power, not enough power and so on. So since the first test, the feeling the, from like power side was okay. We just had to tune with the settings and the standard settings we put in the product because some, most people don't even change the setting when they put in the car. So that's something we had to figure out. But yeah, other than that, we played around a lot with the settings. Now with the 8 scale speedo, we have some new again. And uh, yeah, tuning and still quite new. So we are not finished for sure. Yeah, and uh, John already sort of um, hinted that you you, uh, you guys are looking forward to having more people on board, uh, more team drivers. You have Michal this year, um, so are you are you taking more role in Elstram or are you still going to be fully X-ray? Because I think there's a big potential with this. It's a really cool technology uh, and so on. So what do you what is your role going to be in the future with Elstram? Yeah, it depends what you mean by full with X-ray because. Uh, like most people think I work for the factory, but I don't, in fact. So I'm still a student. I haven't finished university yet. So I work a lot at home with my parents' uh, companies. We also have a track, so I do a lot of that. And then on the side, when I do RC, I'm kind of in between all these factories that support me. So I try to help each and every one of them, obviously. But uh, for sure, there's potential for the future. So. I study electrical engineering. I hope to finish that. I hope to finish that soon. So we will see what the future brings. Yeah. Um, good luck to you guys here at the world. It's really, uh, really cool to see you guys come out with that eight scale speedo. And um, yeah, thanks for the interview, Max. Yeah, thank you very much.